joy. Oh, yes, I still have joy. After all, After all the things I've been through, I, I still have joy. I'm in the way, the bright and shining way. I'm in the glory land way. Telling the world that Jesus saved the day. Yes, I'm in the glory land way. You know that I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. And heaven is nearer and the way through is clearer for I'm in the glory land way. Bless you the call the gospel comes today. Get in the glory land way. Wonder come home for hasten to obey for I'm in the glory land way. You know that I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. And never is nearer and the way through is clearer for. I'm in the glory land way. And onward I go rejoicing in his love. I'm in the glory land way. Soon I shall see him in that home above. Oh, I'm in the glory land way. You know that I'm in the glory land way. Yes, I'm in the glory land way. And heaven is nearer and the way through is clearer for. I'm in the glory land way. Yes, I'm in the glory land way. If heaven is nearer and the way through is clearer for, I'm in the glory land way. Sure.
which are in Hebrew. Uh, Luke chapter 6, verse 38, the Bible reads, Give, and it will be given to you, a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. At this time, let us give, not grudgingly or of necessity, but cheerfully, because God loves you. Jesus, my heavenly King, loves me, I know. Praises to Him I sing, all where I go. Mostly to Him I cling, blessings still flow. And I love my Savior too. Oh, and I love my Savior. And He, he loves me too. And I, I sing his favor in everything I do. And walking with him each day, love light does shine. Doing his will always never be mine. Kneeling to him, I pray thy will, not mine. And I love my Savior too. Will and I, I love my Savior. And he, he loves me too. Will and I, I see his favor in everything. I do, and happy to serve my friend with all his eyes. Rapture will never end, nothing but love, and voices will sweetly blend under his charm. And I love my Savior to you, will and I, I love my Savior. He loves me, yes, he loves me too, and I, I see his savor in everything I do. He and he shall find, knock and the door shall be open. We will be in Luke, the ninth chapter, and we'll read verses 23 through 26 this morning, where the Bible reads, Then he said to them all, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. Verse 25 says, for what profit is it 
to a man if he gains the whole world and is himself destroyed or lost. And verse 26, for whoever is ashamed of me and my words of him, the son of man will be ashamed when he comes in his own glory and in his father's and of the holy angels. Again, we are thankful to God for the opportunity that he gives me to share his word with you. And of course, we are always appreciative of the love that you have for God and for his word. Last week, we began a lesson from Luke 9, verse 23, where we suggested uh, salvation is free, but discipleship will cost your life. Uh, our lesson was the cost of discipleship. Uh, in this gospel, we find Jesus making the children of God aware that if they wanted to go where he was going, certain conditions needed to be met. Uh, first, we spoke about the fact that we must bear our desires. Uh, found in verse 23a, where he says, uh, if anyone desires to come after me. The word desire here has a sense of movement, of aligning behind the Lord. Uh, not leaning, wanting Jesus to follow. Uh, we shared the fact that we must be like Ruth in her conversation with her mother-in-law, Naomi, when she said, entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people uh, and your God, my God. Secondly, we share the thought that we must be in denial. Uh, the B uh, verse in that text says, let him deny himself. Uh, the word deny here speaks of one who disavows, rejects, abdicates self, uh, becoming more and more like the apostle Paul who says it is no longer I uh, that live, but Christ lives in me. And then finally, we spoke about the fact that we must be brave or we must brave its difficulties. Uh, he goes on to say, and take up his cross daily. Uh, this cross is uh, not something that we have to lift as we emphasized last week, but it is a burden we choose to bear for Christ's sake. Uh, the phrase take up is a conscious decision to be cross bearers by picking up what is difficult, demanding, and could lead to death. It's the apostle Paul of the church at Rome that says, I beseech you therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. So after desiring, denying, and uh, dying to self, uh, there was still one more condition that uh, we're going to talk about this morning. And that's the condition where Jesus says, follow me. Family, uh, though this call from God will be challenging, uh, we can find comfort in it. Uh, we are going to share some thoughts with you this morning to hopefully help you to understand uh, this fact. And we hope that those who choose to be his disciples, those who choose to follow him would do so with confidence and knowing that we are not alone. Uh, this morning, I would like to speak to you from the subject, the charge in discipleship. Pray with me, please. Father in heaven, we come to you this time thanking you so much for this day. Father, thanking you once again for the opportunity to share your word. As always, I ask that you remove the messenger that the message might be heard. Father, this morning, give me the confidence, the conviction, the boldness it takes to proclaim that message. And I pray that you will open the hearts of those that are listening, hoping that they will receive it with gladness. Challenge us by your word. This prayer and all others we do ask in your son's name. Amen. As we look at this charge this morning, or we could call it care, uh, we'll see three things. The first thing we'll see is his presence in our pursuit. Uh, Jesus says, and follow me. While the call of discipleship is difficult, uh, 
the key is to focus on who's on this journey with us. Once again, Jesus says, and follow me. The demand of discipleship, family, uh, uh, can be achievable uh, because he is with us. It was he to his disciples in Matthew, the 28th chapter that says, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. It's also the psalmist David that took confidence in his circumstances when he says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Listen, our Savior's presence gives me confidence. First of all, because of who he is. Scriptures say he is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He who is, who was, and who is to come. Family, he is the Almighty. Even before he came to earth, his name would be foretold. The prophet told us, for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. But also I am confident because of what he has done. Uh, John, the 16th chapter, uh, he says, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Listen, our Savior did for us what we could not do for ourselves. Once again, it was the prophet Isaiah that says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes family, we are healed. Last and definitely not least, uh, I am confident because of what he has given. Uh, two things in particular, he's given us his grace. It's the apostle Paul to the church at Ephesus that says that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. It was he who also in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 says, But thanks be to God who has given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And secondly, he has given us salvation. You know, there's a song we used to sing that said, salvation has been brought down. Uh, family, our glorious God came down from heaven, wrapped himself in the flesh to die for you and I. Apostle Paul of the church at Philippi at once said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, scripture says he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Beloved, it is this gesture that gives us the opportunity for salvation. Acts chapter 4, starting in verse 11, the Bible says, This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Family, there is a God and he is alive and his name is Jesus Christ. Which brings us to our second point this morning where we uh, see his partnership in our pursuit. Uh, Jesus says, and follow me. The word follow here is uh, a compound Greek word, akaluthio, uh, 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 expressing union with or likeness, and uh, kaluthos, which means a road or a path or a journey. Uh, Putting the two together, it literally means to walk the same road with. Uh, the tense of this word uh, means to constantly and 
to continually follow him. Um, family, this act of following him uh, speaks of several things. First of all, it speaks of an abdication. Uh, to abdicate means to renounce or relinquish a throne, uh, a right uh, power or claim to something. Uh, it literally means to surrender all. Uh, we must understand uh, to follow Jesus, uh, it means we are to surrender to him the rights over all of our lives. Um, to abdicate or to renounce the throne of our heart and place him as king on it. Uh, there's a song that we sing that says, all to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. Um, this thought uh, takes us back to what we left off with last week uh, when Jesus states that we are, uh, are rather must deny ourselves. Um, this same verb, uh, for deny is used in Peter's denial of the Lord. Uh, uh, Peter literally disowned Jesus when he says, I do not know the man. Uh, we are not supposed to, to disown our Savior, but we are uh, and we must disown ourselves completely. Um, you know, we shared uh, with you last week that self-denial and denying self can in fact be different. You see, we are not talking about um, a period of voluntary abstinence. Uh, it's not about denying things to myself. It's about denying self to self. Um, the Apostle Paul uh, in Philippians chapter 2, starting in verse 3, it says, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Uh, let each of you look not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. Uh, family, Jesus is calling you to abdicate your throne and to bow before his. Uh, secondly, this following speaks of an invitation. Uh, Jesus is telling them to join me in my path, my journey. You see, if we choose to follow, it means uh, we're all about going uh, where he uh, goes uh, because he is, in fact, the leader. Uh, uh, before the age of uh, high-speed internet and, 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 and gaming, uh, uh, our activity was to go outside and to play. And there was a game that, that we used to play called Follow the Leader. Uh, you know, if you followed, you remained in the game. Uh, if you did not follow, you lost. Um, in that same manner, family, we, we must follow Jesus. As long as we follow Jesus, we are in the game and will remain in the game. But if we choose to stop following him, we will be lost. It was he who said, abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. You see, when we follow Jesus, we not only go where he goes, but we will do what he did. Uh, it was he and Mark the first chapter, um, verse 17, it says, follow me and I will make you become fishers of men. Uh, you see, our walk is based on Jesus's story. Uh, in, in him, we get a glimpse of God's love for the world. Second uh, Peter chapter three, verse nine, scripture says, not willing, or he was not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Um, his love uh, uh, is special. Um, 
He loves us and longs that everyone know his love and answer to it. Uh, because You see, his love uh, is transforming. Uh, it heals what is wounded. It restores what is broken. First uh, Peter chapter 4, verse 8 says, For uh, love will cover a multitude of sins. Uh, family, his love is the light we need in our dark moments and the hope that trouble will not last always. Uh, Prophet Isaiah in Lamentations 3 says, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed for his compassions never fail. You see, his invitation should be considered, I believe, uh, a great honor. Um, we should be uh, grateful to be his instruments, uh, to partner with him in redemption, our, our uh, uh, redeeming, excuse me, the world. Um, John chapter 12, verse 26, the Bible says, if anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my father will honor. Uh, finally, following um, him speaks of an association. Uh, see, the disciples um, uh, uh, or had uh, issues uh, at times with trying to uh, do what was right. But discipleship is not about system or rules or rituals. Uh, it's a relationship where we are invited to be close to him, to obey his teachings, to take the same path he takes, to walk the same roads he walked. The Apostle Paul to the church at Philippi that says that I might know him uh, uh, and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death. It was the Apostle Paul that wanted to experience Jesus and the only way he felt he could do that was to walk where Jesus walked, to do what he did. Our discipleship gives us the privilege of being associated with him intimately. Uh, not on occasion, but always. Um, I've heard it said that Christianity is not just an avocation or a hobby. It is a lifelong, eternity-long uh, vocation. It was the psalmist David in Psalms, the 27th division, that says, One thing I desire of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in its temple. Um, there was a, a Christian author by the name of David Platts uh, who summarized um, what it means to follow uh, Jesus. Uh, he said, to follow him is to live with radical abandon for his glory. It is to live with joyful dependence on his grace. It is to live with faithful adherence to his person. And it is to live with urgent obedience to his mission. And our final point this morning is found in verses 24 through 26 of our text, where we see his providence in our pursuit. After the call to discipleship uh, and the four conditions found in verse 23, uh, Jesus concludes with three cautions in verses 24 through 26. Uh, um, these cautions are warnings or statements or events that indicate a possible impending problem or danger. <clears throat> Excuse me, you see, often uh, the most ignored warnings are those, I believe, that are given by God. Um, the first warning given by God was during the creation uh, when man ignored that warning and we know how that went. Uh, my prayer family is that you heed the warnings um, that uh, the Lord is giving us. Um, there are three that I wanna pull out from this, these uh, verses and then this message will be yours. 
Uh, the first, if you only focus on your own life, you'll lose it. Verse 24 of our text says, for whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. Paradoxically, family, um, we, in fact, can lose our lives trying to save it. It was Jesus that said, he who loves his life will lose it. And he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Uh, the phrase uh, desires to save is rather wills to save. Uh, it uh, points to the attitude of the one who puts his, his emphasis on getting the best out of life for himself. Uh, but let's pause for uh, just a second and look at the word life. Um, it's not speaking necessarily about our physical existence nor our soul, but rather our self, uh, which speaks to the word used for life. Uh, the Greek word uh, for life is where we get our English word psyche, uh, which speaks of the human personality which thinks, feels, plans, and chooses. Uh, it literally uh, means the natural animal life of which the main interests are centered in the earth. Uh, that's kind of why the Apostle Paul told the Corinthians that the natural man or the earthly man does not receive the things of God. Uh, see, the natural man finds pleasure in anything but God. And we should follow uh, the example of the Apostle Paul in Acts, the 20th chapter, when he says, but none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself, so that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. So in our text, uh, what Jesus is saying is, if we grasp at this fading earthly life, uh, we will miss what is real and what is enduring. But on the contrary, uh, the man who is willing to give up what he considers valuable uh, does not lose uh, his physical life or anything. Uh, the only thing he does lose, if you will, is himself. Uh, now, what does that mean? Well, what it does not mean is that uh, he or she does not lose their individuality or their identity, if you will. Uh, yes, um, our will indeed yields to Christ's will, but we do not become robots. You know, I know uh, there are a lot of people in the world that's one of the reasons for not wanting to be a child of God because they feel as though we are robots that are just being uh, uh, manipulated and just aimlessly walking about this earth, then we know that's not the case. As a matter of fact, contrary to that thought, when the child of God uh, loses himself uh, through the experience of loss, we in fact come to save our life in a deeper sense. Um, missionary by the name of Jim Elliott once said, he is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain that which he cannot lose. Uh, Jesus puts it this way, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. Uh, family, when we give uh, up all for Jesus, we will find ourselves entering a life that is life indeed. It was Jesus who said in John 10.10, 10, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. But he says, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Listen, if we try to hold on uh, to what we have, we will miss out on what Jesus has for us. Uh, you see, we must stop living for self and learn to die for him. Someone once, once told me, uh, you don't lose a seed when you plant it. Uh, though it seems dead and buried, 
truthfully, you set it free uh, to become what it was always intended to be. Uh, it reminds me of uh, what the Apostle Paul shared with the church at Ephesus when he says, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. The second warning is if you only focus on your success, you'll lose your soul. In verse 25, Jesus asked the question, for what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and is himself destroyed or lost? Jesus uh, in this verse is using economic terms, um, profit, gain, loss. The word destroyed in uh, certain versions is the word forfeit. Um, he is saying you could gain everything and lose your very soul. Think about that for a minute. You know, there are people out there that are, that are striving to just get things and, 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 and uh, they believe that's the ultimate success not realizing that one day all those things that they have gained will go away. Then what? Uh, what will you have when this life is over? What position will you find yourself in? Uh, listen, you could make a lot of money and end up in hell. Uh, nothing material, family, can compensate for the loss of self. And nothing should be more valuable than a life with him. Psalmist that says, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. The question that everyone should ask is, will we give our life to Jesus or will we waste our life on this world? Um, you know, the person who wants to preserve their own way of life is, in fact, a detriment to themselves. Um, there was Jesus in Mark, the eighth chapter, that says, well, what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world or literally if he lives to please self and loses his own soul? The final warning, if you are ashamed of Jesus, he will be ashamed of you. We see this in verse 26 of our text. When Jesus says, for whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his own glory and in his Father's and of the holy angels. Following uh, Jesus uh, uh, means that they had uh, to associate themselves, if you will, with someone who was despised, rejected, and would be executed. Uh, in this verse, uh, Jesus is referencing uh, an eternal issue. Um, he is speaking of a time when uh, he will come in glory and the glory of the Father and of the angels. Uh, yet the one who succeeds in saving his life in this world uh, are struggling with rejecting the call for self-sacrifice. Um, uh, one day, that person who chooses rather to please self, to serve self, and to ignore Jesus uh, will hear the words uh, of Matthew, the seventh chapter, Starting around verse 21, the Bible says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Uh, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me you who practice lawlessness. When Jesus says, I never knew you, uh, to these so-called disciples, uh, he meant that he never recognized them as true disciples or uh, his friends. 
Um, he was not talking about knowing them intellectually. He's speaking of a relationship. Uh, uh, he speaks to the fact that he never had anything in common with them. Uh, he did not dwell in their hearts like those in Ephesians chapter 3, uh, nor did he have his mind um, on Jesus Christ uh, like Philippians chapter 2. Um, Paul uh, uh, was speaking uh, to those who uh, thought that Jesus uh, was in fact foolish. First uh, Corinthians chapter 2, he says, For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Uh, listen, family. In all these uh, ways and more, uh, Jesus never knew them. Uh, the Son of Man in the day of his glory uh, then would become justified in being ashamed of them. Um, but note that Jesus is not breaking off the relationship here uh, because there was never a relationship to break off. Uh, these people who could talk the talk uh, uh, couldn't walk the walk. It was uh, Jesus who spoke about people like this in Matthew, the 15th chapter, when he says, these people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Um, as we draw to a conclusion, those of us who have been born into the body by faith uh, in his word do have a relationship with him. We are, in fact, his children. And he is calling us to become his foot soldiers uh, by willingly becoming his disciples. Um, remember, as we shared from the beginning, uh, that if we choose to be disciples, there will be a cost. But be assured, he will provide the care necessary for this journey. Listen, family, we all in one voice need to shout the words, where he leads me, I will follow. I will follow all the way. Pray with me, please. Father in heaven, we come to you at this time thanking you so much for this day and for your blessings. Thanking you once again for this opportunity that you have given us, Father, to share your word, and give you uh, the worship that you are due. Father, I thank you for once again allowing us, even in these difficult times, Father, to be able to address your greatness and to show our appreciation for you. Um, asking that you, of course, will continue to help us all, Father, to be patient during this time until we can come back and, and, and fellowship one with another and and, 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 and truly in one voice, uh, uh, give you what is due your name. Father, I, I pray now that you will help us, Father, to understand what it means to be your children. That it's not just for us to just sit back and, and wait for you to come, but, but while we are here, Father, we are tasked with a mission to go into all the world, Father, to go into our communities, and, 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 and to share your wonderful message, to be a light, uh, to be a source of comfort. Um, help us, Father, to recognize uh, the, the, the seriousness of what you have called us to and understand, Father, that you uh, want us all to be your disciples, your learners, Father those that follow you wherever you go. Um, help us to recognize that in order to do that, we must have a desire. And then having that desire, Father, we must, we must learn to uh, seek you and reject self. Uh, this must happen in order for us to take up that cross, Father, that represents pain, 
uh, humiliation, frustration, uh, and many other things. It's only then that we will be privy to follow you. Uh, Father, I thank you for uh, reassuring us that, that even as we follow you, uh, that you will be there to give us the guidance we need, that you will provide the strength that we need, that you will even give us uh, warning signs to help us, Father, not to make uh, mistakes along the way. But even if we do, we are thankful for your grace, your understanding, your, your, your patience to, to lift us up when we fall. Um, with that being said, Father, please continue to keep us in your care. Continue to bless all of those that are under the sound of my voice. Uh, this prayer and all others we do ask in your son's name. Amen. Again, we, we, we thank you for um, your patience and uh, we hope and pray that we have shared something with you today that will help you in your walk. Um, continue to, of course, pray for this ministry and pray for uh, this congregation as, as we prepare to uh, one day um, be able to come back. We want to do it safely, of course, uh, but but we are definitely eager to, to be in your presence again, to see your lovely faces. And so continue uh, to keep us in your prayers. And of course, we will be sharing with you in the near future of uh, our upcoming plans. May God bless you and may he keep you in his care. It's my prayer. Thank you for being a part of the Infinite Word Broadcast with Pastor and Evangelist Brother Anthony Stokes and the Compton Avenue Church of Christ, located at 9415 Compton Avenue in the city of Los Angeles. We invite you to subscribe to the Infinite Word channel and future broadcast by clicking on the subscribe button at the bottom of your screen. We'd love to hear from you. Let us know your prayer request or Bible questions you may have. Maybe you would like to participate in an online Bible course. Please contact us at the phone number or email address that appears on your screen. Or visit our website and follow the links to let us know your request. Friends, we are bound to give thanks to God always, because He chose each of us for salvation by our believing in His Son, Jesus Christ, and being sanctified through the Holy Spirit. He is urging you today, by your hearing of His preached word, to be baptized into His family of believers. Again, thank you for being a part of today's broadcast. We encourage you to share with a friend. Remember always, with God, Everything is possible. All power is in his hands. May he keep you in his great love and mercy. Until next week.